I'm feeling generous today, so let's try and not kill any of the people working for us in this company today. I know it's gonna be a challenge, but we shall see. I don't see any way to kill the people in this very room. So perhaps it might be easier than expected. I would also like to thank you all for the overwhelming support. I've received many comments providing some useful advice on how to complete the optional challenges in many of these levels. And I really appreciate it, so keep it coming. Do I feel like an idiot reading the comments? Well, yes, I do, but not as much as when I'm editing the videos. <laughs> like when I edit a video, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you making it so complicated? So much more than it needs to be. But as some of you might know, there's a huge difference between writing a code and being like the backseat driver, you know, looking over someone's shoulder and correcting obvious mistakes. I've been actually thinking about maybe solving some of these puzzles live so you can see the struggle. Would it be something you guys find interesting? Let me know. Now finally, let's dive into this level. All their data got wiped again. For real this time? Yeah, sure. I don't think they have any backups in this company. There are 100 cubes and we just need to write numbers from 0 to 99 somewhere. Anywhere. I would like to establish a baseline. Let's see how long it takes for a single person to do this. So let's say if above you there isn't a wall, so that's only this person, I mean that's not this person, that's everyone else, and your program. So only this person is gonna be doing stuff. Now let's do a grid search and simply, you know, write the numbers. So first start at one, so set uh, zero, I mean, to memory one, and keep walking left. So let's say if you are standing on a data cube, uh, that's stupid, isn't it? It is the same issue as last time. I just am not able to, you know, write a grid search this year. I believe I was capable of doing it last year. All right, I think I've got it. So first off, start walking left. So. Step left, pick up the cube, write what you have in memory one, increment memory one, drop the cube. Then you repeat this until you reach a wall. So once you reach a wall on the left side, you jump away from this loop and you jump to this other loop right here. As you are on the left side, you just step down and then you are on a data cube, you also need to write stuff on. So pick up, write, calculate and drop. Basically these bits of code are the same, which I actually hate. And then step right, repeat this forever. That means put a bloody jump there like that. And when should you stop doing this loop? Well, once you are standing on these spots on the right, where there no longer is a data cube. So then you jump all the way back up here and take a step left, but you should also step down as well. So let's put it here, step down there. All right, this is gonna work. First try, let's see. Writing zero, incrementing, dropping. This is gonna take a long time. I just want to see what happens at the end. Yeah, yeah, seems flawless. And what about this side? Awesome, that works. So cut and action, almost there, 99, nice. We've done it. Each number really appreciates being a part of something, like a grid on the floor. So we've made it, used too many commands, the time is hideous, but as I said, that's a baseline. We almost even failed the challenge, because 500 seconds is the maximum. I would say that this is really close to, you know, passing the size challenge. We just need to remove five commands, and that's roughly this part right here because we have essentially the same code twice as I said. I'm gonna copy that and try it again and this time maybe employ the, you know, tactics from before when you go left and that's when you're writing numbers and then you reset to the right, step down, left and so on. So again, I would probably let only the one person do it and I say keep doing this until you reach the left wall. Once you reach the wall on the left, you step down and let's say if you are not standing on a data cube or if you are standing on a data cube, that's better, you just keep stepping right. 
and you keep doing that. Once you're done, you jump to here and again start walking left, writing the numbers, and then step down, go right and reset. And all of this, I don't believe is necessary. We've basically saved all these commands, so we've got 14. Do you know what that means? That means this code is not gonna work because the target was 16, wasn't it? Okay, so that's pretty close. Let's see whether this works. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, why not? Oh, because I didn't put a jump there. So those are the commands I've been missing. So go left and keep doing that until you reach a wall. Then down, keep doing that and jump elsewhere. 15. Let's see. Okay, so far it's working. What about this? Go right and that's 10, 11. Okay, great. Right, that's gonna work. All right, level completed. Let's see the optional challenge. 16 commands and we've used 15. Well, job well done as far as I'm concerned. And to be honest, as a programmer, I wouldn't normally care about the speed so much. I mean, in this case, it's really slow. Okay, I'll give you that. So some optimization is in order, but oftentimes clean code, short and concise, is much better than speed, but usually you are able to do both at the same time, which feels amazing. Short, concise code, which is also incredibly fast. Like a week ago, I think, I did a code review to my boss and I saw a method he made, which was n squared complexity, and the code was really hard to read. So I suggested an optimization, making it linear and also much easier to read and understand. He loved it. Now, we've got many people who are not doing anything at all, and this is about teamwork. So how can we make the people do shit? <laughs> well, we need them to somehow know which numbers they are writing. So what if each person goes in their own row and the other person keeps looking in this direction and they're trying to, you know, see the cube and they're going to read the number on the cube. So first off, everyone needs to get on this line right here. Again, no telling, no listening. I'm, I'm not sure. I either don't understand the commands properly or they are just slowing us down and they're not the way to go when you want to make this fast. So if to the left of you there isn't a data cube, meaning you are somewhere here in this area, you just keep walking left. Now everyone is basically on this line and I want everyone to keep looking up and if there is a worker or the worker is to the top left, possibly writing a number, you don't do anything. So this is basically like, listen, wait, don't execute any code, just wait until something happens. We could probably say something different and say, here you listen, and when the person has written the number, they're gonna tell you, like this, in this direction, that they are done. And I don't really see the difference between this and that. I feel like this is faster, you know, easier. Let's just leave it like this for a second. So once there isn't a person above you or to the top left of you, you look at what he's written. How do you do it? Set memory one, and that's gonna be this item right there. And this person is gonna look there. There is nothing in there, so that's a zero, I believe. And I want everyone to realize that this number is the first on this row. So this person is gonna end with nine. So here we need to start with 10. So you want to calculate in memory two, or memory one, you know, who cares? Memory one plus 10. So if this is a zero, the first number you write is a 10. Here, 20, 30, 40, and so on. And then you just keep walking left. So you step left, we don't even need any if statement. Step left, pick up the data cube, write what you have in memory one, Drop the data cube and increment memory one by one. There. Now I feel like I'm missing something. So we need a jump here. Keep stepping left or right. 
and then at the end they would probably keep writing higher and higher numbers so we should probably put a termination if statement here so if to the left of you there is a wall you end your program or we can even shave off one command if there isn't a wall that's when you jump there nice saved a command we are still sub 16 does this work i feel like it's gonna work or i'm missing something i'm probably missing something <laughs> let's see so this person is already here because there's no one above him great oh i see i messed up already well never mind let's just keep this going and he's gonna calculate 10 oh hang on he, he wasn't supposed to calculate 10 he's the only guy that wasn't supposed to do that all right so a couple of issues first off this lady is gonna think she's the top person and second problem this person is starting at 10 already so let's say only if above you there isn't a wall should you increment by 10 and i suppose we are gonna have to go with tell and listen that might fix the other issue so let's say if above you there isn't a wall which is basically the same if statement as we have here so let's just put all of this there now we do have to split it oh shit what about this person is memory one initialized on zero i think it is so screw him he's not gonna set it to anything so if above you there isn't a wall meaning you are a normal person here not the one on the first row you're gonna be listening for hi so all these people should be listening once they reach this column the first person isn't listening so he's gonna step pick up right drop and then i would say he should tell hi to this person perhaps there isn't a person yet so let's say if to the bottom right of you or after calculating because all right you know what let's just trust there's someone there already no we, we need to do it like this otherwise he will tell every time forget i said anything so if to the bottom right there is a worker but for example if you're here already you don't want to keep telling the worker anything because that would slow you down we probably wouldn't care anyway but let's do it like this if there is a worker to the right of you there isn't a data cube so it truly means you are on the first data cube you tell them just them hi and you keep doing this no sorry that's wrong i messed up you don't keep doing this but i i need you to wait here until there is a person right so you keep doing this no <laughs> uh no we have to split the if statement so if to the right of you there isn't a data cube you check if there is a worker and if there is one you tell them hi but if there isn't one you repeat afterwards when you step away you no longer trigger this you know if statement so you don't care about the workers and you don't tell them anything and once you've told them you get to jump out of this loop there this is bullshit and this should work now it's gonna work you will see pick up zero calculate and tell hi okay so one more thing they all lined up on this column before he finished writing so i don't actually think we need the if statement there but it might be much faster to actually keep it in because then the people would keep saying hi every time they write something so could this work well let's see let's just speed this up and see whether this works 30 40 50 it seems to be working but i fear it's gonna be slow and this person is stuck oh i see so if to the right of you there isn't a data cube but also there isn't there is not a wall there below you so this person can skip this whole thing let's try again so is it working now yeah 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 it's working but it's gonna be slow i can feel it yeah all right we need 50 more seconds 
That was a huge improvement actually, but I'm not sure what's taking them so long this time. We could do optimization like when this person reaches the left side, he's gonna go down and continue in this row and writing the numbers, so that could speed this up, but the single person isn't taking 50 seconds to walk the row. What's slowing them down is them actually waiting for all the people to tell them stuff. You know what? We could make a slight speed up if we, once we write the item, we already tell them hi. Meaning you can already read the item before I drop it and especially before I start calculating stuff. Like that. So that should be a significant speed up. It still seems to be working. Basically all the people got triggered a little faster. 109! Slowly getting there. That's like a 22 second speed up. Not bad. But we still need 30 more seconds. And as I said, we don't need this if statement anymore as well. We can just straight away tell. Because it's gonna take some time for him to write stuff. Let's try doing that. And remove all this. So once you've written stuff, check if you're on this column. And then tell the person there, hi. Does it work? Yes, it does. All right. So that should be like one if statement faster times 10. Just check that 104. That's much faster than expected. And we've got 16 commands even. <laughs> so the optional size challenge still completed. I feel like we're supposed to be adding more commands to make it faster in some way. Here we might not even need this set. We just want them to calculate what's top left plus 10. We don't need to set it first. However, setting does not take any time, does it? Uh, well, let's see. I've run it again. Yeah, 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 still 104, so no change there. Just made the code a little shorter. <laughs> 15 commands. Damn, that's great. So stepping left, that's for sure. Then everyone is listening and that's taking quite a long time. But you can't calculate what row you are on until someone has finished writing. So you should be listening. And if you're not, you step, pick up, write. And that's when the person can already see what you're doing. So if statement and tell hi. I don't see what else I can do there. The main point is, how can I tell the person down here? Oh, I've got it. <laughs> I think I've got it. We can actually start from the bottom as well. It was dumb, wasn't it? <laughs> so if above you there isn't a wall, I'm gonna say if uh, below you there is a wall, you set memory one to 90 because that's the first number you're gonna be writing. Then you don't want to check for this and be listening. You want to jump there and step and start writing. However, you might want to trigger the person above you as well. So I'm actually going to put the useless if statement that saved us like five seconds back. So if to the top right of you there is a worker. Oh, and I don't want this. If to the top right of you there is a worker, you tell them hi and then you're done and you can keep going. Or if there is a worker to the bottom right of you, you also tell them hi and you keep going. But otherwise, if you haven't said hi to anyone yet, you keep doing this and checking for people there. Do you need to keep checking? I don't think you do, because there's always going to be somewhere there already before you finished writing. There. So we don't even need these jumps at all, do we? Yeah, I think so. All right, and then how do you know what you're supposed to be writing? So here I say, look top left, but now you're supposed to do something else. So if to the top left of you, the data cube is, let's say, not a zero. So a non-zero data cube means they've actually started writing something, but not in this case. Okay. So there's the problem with me not knowing what number they've written again. Oh, I know. Let's start looking bottom right. 
So if there isn't a zero bottom right, you're supposed to look there. So in memory one, you calculate bottom left, not right, nugget. And that's gonna be minus 10, minus 10 there. So if this person writes 90, says hi, this guy looks there, sees a non-zero number, 90 minus 10 is 80, he's gonna write 80. Great. Otherwise, so let's say else, you look top left, because that's gonna be the only other option. There's either gonna be a non-zero number to the bottom left of you, or whatever number is there, that's the one you're interested in. So there. 24 commands, this has to work. Please let this work. 90, zero, high, high, okay. 90 minus 10 is 80, and there, 10. This has to work, come on. Basically, we are cutting the time in half. Let me see that. It worked. Now, was it fast? Come on, I can't wait. Uh, sh**. <laughs> oh, bollocks. <laughs> Two bloody seconds. <laughs> Oh man. Okay, here we don't need this if statement. We can just say else, I think. <laughs> That's gotta be faster. Come on. <laughs> oh wow. I, I can't believe it. Also, I'm happy it just works, you know, and is fast. Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh. Well, there it is. Took me 35 minutes, and I don't believe I'm gonna be cutting much of the video. Well, you'll see actually however long the video is gonna be. So do tell me, live coding struggle. Interested? 